Hi everyone, today we're going to study surface area of a combination of solids. How to find surface area of a combination of solids? We have some steps. Step 1, try to break the problem down into smaller and regular solids. Step 2, solve the surface areas of smaller solids respectively. Step 3, add the corresponding areas of the smaller solids. Example 1, Rashid got a playing top that is Latu as his birthday present, which surprisingly had no color on it. He wanted to color it with his crayons. The top is shaped like a cone surmounted by a hemisphere. See this figure. The entire top is 5 cm in height and the diameter of the top is 3.5 cm. Find the area he has to color. Take pi equals 22 over 7. The required area here is the total surface area that is equal to curved surface area or CSA of hemisphere plus curved surface area or CSA of the cone. Let us solve the CSA of hemisphere and CSA of cone separately. Let's begin with the CSA of hemisphere. The formula is one half of the formula of the sphere, which is 4 pi r squared. We can simplify this 4 by the denominator 2. That becomes 2 pi r squared. When we substitute the values, we have now 2 times the pi, that is 22 over 7. And the radius of the hemisphere, that is squared. Looking at our figure here, the diameter of the hemisphere is 3.5. Half of that is the radius. So we write here 3.5 over 2. Then we squared. We can simplify this using our calculator. And the answer is 19.25 square centimeter. Next is the CSA of the cone. The formula is pi r times L. L here is the slant height. Let us solve the slant height first. So L equals the square root of the quantity R square plus H square. Our R is 3.5 over 2, that is squared, plus the height of the cone. Looking at our figure, the height is 5 minus 3.5 over 2. Then we will square. We simplify the first fraction as 3.0625 plus. The difference here is 3.25. Then we will square. The sum, then we will take the square root. The total will be 3.6912. This is the L. And this value we will use in here. So the CSA of the cone, pi is 22 over 7, the R or radius 3.5 over 2, and the L value, which is 3.6912. Final answer is 20.3 square centimeter. So these two areas we will substitute in here 19.25 plus 20.3. Total is approximately 39.25. 55 square centimeter. Note here that the total surface area of the top is not the sum of the total surface areas of the cone and hemisphere. Example 2. The decorative block shown is made of two solids, a cube and a hemisphere. The base of the block is a cube with edge 5 cm and the hemisphere fixed on the top has a diameter of 
4.2 cm. Find the total surface area of the block. We take pi equals 22 over 7. This is our figure. The total surface area required is equal to the CSA of hemisphere minus the base area of the hemisphere, then plus the CSA of the cube. The formulas are here. The CSA of the hemisphere is 2 pi r square minus the base area is a circle. That's why in here we have pi r square plus for the cube, CSA is 6 times S square. When we substitute the values, we have 2 times 22 over 7. And for the radius, look in our figure. The diameter is given as 4.2. So half of that is the radius. So we write here 2.1. Then we square. Minus pi is 22 over 7. R square is 2.1 square plus 6 times S square and that is 5 square. The first group here is simplified into 27.72 minus the second group is 13.86 plus 150. When we simplify, the final answer is 163.86 square centimeter. Example 3. A wooden toy rocket is in the shape of a cone mounted on a cylinder, as shown. The height of the entire rocket is 26 cm, while the height of the conical part is 6 cm. The base of the conical portion has a diameter of 5 cm, while the base diameter of the cylindrical portion is 3 cm. If the conical portion is to be painted orange and the cylindrical portion yellow, find the area of the rocket painted with each of these colors. We take pi equals 3.14. This is our figure. Let's begin with the area to be painted by orange that is equal to CSA of the cone plus base area of the cone minus base area of the cylinder. We substitute the values. We have pi r times l plus pi r square. r here is the radius of the cone minus pi r prime and that is squared. r prime here is the radius of the base area of the cylinder. In the first formula, we need a value of the L. Let us solve for L. And that will be L equals the square root of R square plus H square. Looking at our figure here, the R square is 2.5. And that is squared. Plus the H square, that is the height, which is 6 square. Simplifying further, we have the square root of 6.25 plus 36. We get the sum and take the square root. Final answer is 6.5. Then we can use this value and substitute it here. So finally, we have 3.14, that is the pi, times r is 2.5, times the l, which is 6.5, plus the area of the circle. 3.14 times 2.5, which is squared, minus pi is 3.14, and the radius of the base area of the cylinder is 1.5, and this is squared. Simplifying each of the group, we have 51.025 plus 19.625 minus 7.065. Finally, the total is 63.585 square centimeter. We write the answer in here. 
Then we go to the next computation. The area to be painted yellow. And that will be the CSA for cylinder plus area of one base of the cylinder. Substituting the values, we have 2 times pi times r prime times h prime plus pi times r prime that is squared. We have now 2 times 3.14 times the r prime is 1.5 times h prime is 20 plus pi is 3.14 r prime is 1.5 and this will be squared. When we simplify the groups, we have now 188.4 plus 7.065. And the total is 195.465 square centimeter. This is the area to be painted yellow. These are now the final answers. Hi everyone, today we're going to study volume of a combination of solids. The volume of the solid formed by joining two or more basic solids will actually be the sum of the volumes of the constituents. Example 1. Shanta runs an industry in a shed, which is in the shape of a cuboid surmounted by a half cylinder. See this figure here. If the base of the shed is of dimension 7 meters by 15 meters, and the height of the cuboidal portion is 8 meters, find the volume of air that the shed can hold. Take pi equals 22 over 7. When we analyze our figure, we can see that the required volume equals the cuboid's volume plus half of cylinder's volume. We can put the formula as for the cuboid's volume, that is length times width times height plus half of cylinder's volume, that is pi r squared times h. Then we substitute the values. We have 15 times 7 times 8 plus 1 half times the quantity pi. We write 22 over 7 times the radius squared. In our figure, the diameter here is 7 meters. So half of this is 7 over 2. So we see here 7 over 2, that is squared, times the h. For the cylinder, the h is the height, which is 15. Then we simplify the two groups. In the first group, we have 840 plus. The second group is simplified as 288.75. Then the sum is the required volume, that is 1,128.75 cubic meters. Example 2. A juice seller was serving his customers using glasses. See the figure here. The inner diameter of the cylindrical glass was 5 cm, but the bottom of the glass had a hemispherical raised portion which reduced the capacity of the glass. If the height of a glass was 10 cm, find the actual capacity of the glass. Use pi equals 3.14. When we analyze our figure, the actual capacity equals the apparent capacity of glass minus hemispheres volume. The apparent capacity of glass, that is cylinder's volume, 
then subtracted by the hemisphere's volume. Let us put the formulas respectively. For the cylinder's volume, that is pi r square times h minus hemisphere's volume, two-third times pi times r cube. Let us now substitute the values. The pi is 3.14 and the radius is 2.5. And we see here the diameter is 5. Therefore, radius is 2.5. And the h, the height is 10. Minus 2 over 3 times pi, 3.14 times r cube, that is 2.5 cube. In the first group, the product is 196.25 minus the second group, 32.71. And the difference, 163.54 cubic centimeters. Example 3. A solid toy is in the form of a hemisphere surmounted by a right circular cone. The height of the cone is 2 cm and the diameter of the base is 4 cm. If a right circular cylinder circumscribes the toy, find the difference of the volumes of the cylinder and the toy. Take pi equals 3.14 In the figure here, we can write the length of AO equals 2 cm and the BC, that is the diameter, is 4 cm. That means the radius is 2 cm. Now let us analyze. We found out that the required volume equals cylinder volume minus toy volume. And this toy volume is cone volume plus hemisphere volume. Let us now substitute the formulas respectively. For the volume of cylinder, that is pi r squared times height minus cone volume is one third times pi r squared times h plus hemisphere volume two third times pi times r cubed. Let us substitute the corresponding values. For the cylinder volume, that is 3.14 times r square is 2 square. Now, for the height, that is AO plus OP. That will be 2 plus 2. That's why we write here 4. Minus 1 third times 3.14 times 2 square. Now, for the height of the cone, that is the AO, so we write here 2, plus 2 third times pi, 3.14, times 2 cube. Let us simplify each of the products. For the first product, we have 50.24, minus, this is the second product, 8.37, plus the third product, 16.75. We can show that we simplify the values in the grouping symbol and that will be 25.12. Now the difference 50.24 minus 25.12 is 25.12 cubic centimeter. This is the answer. Hi everyone, today we're going to study conversion of solid from one shape to another. Surely you would have seen candles. Generally, they are in the shape of a cylinder. You may have also seen some candles shaped like an animal. The question is, how are they made? If you want a candle of any special shape, you will have to heat the wax in a metal container 
till it becomes completely liquid. Then, you will have to pour it into another container which has the special shape that you want. For example, take a candle in the shape of a solid cylinder, melt it, and pour whole of the molten wax into another container shaped like a rabbit. On cooling, you will obtain a candle in the shape of the rabbit. The volume of the new candle will be the same as the volume of the earlier candle. This is what we have to remember when we come across objects which are converted from one shape to another or when a liquid which originally filled one container of a particular shape is poured into another container of a different shape or size. Example 1. A cone of height 24 cm and radius of base 6 cm is made up of modeling clay. A child reshapes it in the form of a sphere. Find the radius of the sphere. We know that the volume of sphere equals volume of cone. Let us show the formulas for each. For the volume of sphere, that is 4 over 3 pi r cube equals the volume of cone, that is 1 third times pi r square times h. In the given, we have the data for the cone. So we substitute it here. The radius is given as 6, then we square it, and the height h is 24. Let us simplify the cone's volume. 6 squared times 24 will be 864. And from here, we are going to solve for the radius of the sphere. We can cancel the pi and the denominator 3. Then we isolate our cube. That will be 864 divided by 4. The quotient is 216. Then the value of r is the cube root of 216. When we simplify this, that is 6. And the unit of measurement is centimeter. Therefore, the radius of the sphere is 6 centimeters. Example 2. Selvis house has an overhead tank in the shape of a cylinder. This is filled by pumping water from a sump, an underground tank, which is in a shape of a cuboid. The sump has dimensions 1.57 meters times 1.44 meters by 95 centimeters. The overhead tank has its radius 60 centimeters and height 95 centimeters. Find the height of the water left in the sump after the overhead tank has been completely filled with water from the sump which had been full. Use pi equals 3.14. The volume of water in the tank, which is a cylinder, is equal to the volume of water removed from the sump that is a cuboid. Now, the volume of water left in the sump after filling the tank equals volume, that is the cuboid sump, minus the volume of the cylinder tank. Let us show the formulas. For the volume of cuboid, that will be length times width times height, minus the volume formula for cylinder pi r square h. Let us substitute the corresponding values with respect to meters. For the volume of the cuboid, we will have 1.57 times 1.44 times 0 0.95. This 95 centimeters 
is now shifted as 0 0.95 meters minus pi is 3.14 times the radius which is 60 centimeter we write here 0 0.6 that is squared times the height of 95 centimeter we write here 0 0.95 in the second group here the 3.14 we can factor it out as 2 times 1.57 now look at the two groups there are common factors the values 1.57 and 0 0.95 are common we can factor it out what remains in the first group is 1.44 minus in the second group the remaining values are 2 times the square of 0 0.6 we simplify the product 2 times the square of 0 0.6 we will get 0 0.72 and the difference inside the grouping symbol is 0 0.72 and for now with this is in cubic meters this is our volume of water left in the sump after filling the tank let us copy these values near this volume now let us go for the height of the water left in the sump the formula will be volume of water left in the sump divided by length and width of the sump in the numerator we derive this value from the previous computation so we substitute it here while in the denominator that will be length 1.57 times the width 1.44 let us simplify this fraction we can cancel the 1.57 and with the use of our calculator the quotient will be 0 0.475 that is in meters we can convert this into centimeter as 47.5 this is the height of the water left in the sump example 3 a topper rod of diameter 1 cm and length 8 cm is drawn into a wire of length 18 meters of uniform thickness find the thickness of the wire so the volume of wire is equal to the volume of copper rod let us evaluate the volume of copper rod the formula is pi r square times h in the problem we have diameter given us one centimeter and we need the radius that means radius is one half centimeter let us now substitute this value for the r so that will be pi times square of one half times the height which is eight we simplify the square of one half to be one fourth then we cancel this eight by the denominator four final answer is two pi cubic centimeter this is the volume of copper rod now the volume of wire the formula is also pi r square times h with the idea here that the volume of wire equals volume of copper rod this is the volume of copper rod that we can substitute for the volume of wire so we have 2 pi equals pi r square h then we solve for the radius r we isolate the r square so that will be 2 pi divided by pi times h we can simplify this by cancelling the pi then the value of r will be the square root of the fraction 2 over h now this h is the height and in this problem for the wire this is equal to the length given us 18 meters we convert this 18 meters into centimeter as 1800 then we substitute this 1800 to the h so it becomes like this we simplify the fraction as 1 over 900 finally the square root is 1 over 30 the problem requires the thickness of the wire 
In that case, it refers to the diameter of the wire. We have the radius computed as 1 over 30. That means we multiply this by 2 to get diameter. So 2 times 1 over 30, that will be 1 over 15 centimeter. This is the thickness of the wire. Hi everyone, today we're going to study frustum of a cone. Given a cone, when we slice or cut through it with a plane parallel to its base and remove the cone that is formed on one side of that plane, the part that is now left over on the other side of the plane is called a frustum of the cone. This is the frustum. Now let's go to volume of frustum of a cone. We have a frustum here. Given h as the height, r sub 1 is the radius of bigger circular base. r sub 2 is the radius of smaller circular base. For the volume of frustum, the formula is one-third times pi times height times the quantity the square of r sub 1 plus the square of r sub 2 plus the product r sub 1 times r sub 2. Now, the curved surface area of a frustum of a cone. Let h be the height, r sub 1, radius of bigger circular base. r sub 2 is the radius of smaller circular base. Now let's have the L. This is the slant height of frustum. And the formula is the square root of the quantity h square plus the square of the difference r sub 1 minus r sub 2. Now, for the curved surface area of frustum, the formula is pi times the quantity r sub 1 plus r sub 2, then times L. Now, total surface area of a frustum of a cone. This is our frustum. For the total surface area of frustum, we have this formula, the CSA or the curved surface area plus the area of the bigger base circle plus the area of the smaller base circle. And that will be pi times the sum r sub 1 plus r sub 2 times L plus pi times the square of r sub 1 plus pi times the square of r sub 2. Example, the radii of the ends of a frustum of a cone 45 cm high are 28 cm and 7 cm. See this figure. Find its volume, the curved surface area, and the total surface area. Take pi equals 22 over 7. Let's begin with the volume and this is our formula. When we substitute the corresponding values, we have 1 third times 22 over 7 times 45. Then the quantity 28 square plus 7 square plus 28 times 7. Let us simplify the values inside the grouping symbol. That will be 784 plus 49 plus 186. And the sum inside this grouping symbol is 1029. Using our calculator, we multiply 22 by 45 
by 1029 then divide by 21 that will be 48510 cubic centimeter this is the volume let us write this value opposite the formula let us now compute for the curved surface area this is the formula we need the value for l let us solve for that the formula is given here when we substitute the values we have the square root of 45 square plus the square of the difference 28 minus 7 the difference here is 21 that we will square the square of 45 is 2025 the square of 21 is 441 added to 2025 and that will be 2466 and the square root now is 49.65 let us now substitute this value for the L so for the formula we have now 22 over 7 times 28 plus 7 times the L value 49.65 the sum 28 by 7 is 35 then we multiply 22 by 35 by 49.65 then divide by 7 that will be 5461.5 the unit of measurement is square centimeter this is the curved surface area of the frustum let us copy the value opposite the formula let us now proceed to the total surface area and this is our formula let us substitute the corresponding values we have now 22 over 7 times the group 28 plus 7 times 49.65 plus 22 over 7 times the square of 28 plus 22 over 7 times 7 square the first group here is actually the curved surface area and this is the value that we derive we can simply use this and substitute here then the square of 28 is 784 and 7 square is 49 let us simplify this product 22 times 784 divided by 7 that will be 2464 22 times 49 divided by 7 is 154 then we will take the final sum and that is now 8079.5 square centimeter this is the total surface area